Welcome to EPG Parashala, the lecture series in computer science for the postgraduate program. This is the compiler design course and uh, we are on module 33 to discuss code generation based on tree rewriting and uh, an introduction to code optimization. The objectives of this module are to learn to generate code using a template based approach, uh, to understand the necessity and the need and how to do a tree rewriting and to understand the need for a code optimizer in the phase of the compiler. So, um, typically so far what we have done is uh, the code generation algorithms, it uses an evaluation order uh, by some rearranging of statements or some heuristic reordering etc. And then it is going to assign some registers for a particular variable uh, and for instructions of course. And then you said uh, it will basically select a uh, appropriate target language instruction set and use that to finally generate a code corresponding to every three address code available to it. Now this was actually used as a basis uh, where uh, can we automate the process of code generation completely rather than developing, developing it from scratch. Now when you have a, a gen code algorithm it has to be given all the instruction set all the instruction format, the addressing modes, all those things will basically be have to be given and uh, uh, that is going to be a cumbersome process. So uh, the simple code generator had to be def had to define some data structures etc. So rather than that can we do a template based approach is what is the next uh, al approach to code generation going to talk about. So where uh, uh, it is done by using what is called a tree rewriting based approach. Assume that the evaluation order and adjusters are, done, are uh, available and then uh, the intermediate language could be converted to a representation as a tree. So you are in addition to the intermediate code, you are going to convert this intermediate code into a acceptable form and you already have a lookup kind of scenario where if this is the form, the corresponding um, code will be something like this, okay. That will be already designed by uh, the algorithm and it will be available as a lookup. So my aim is not to generate the final code, my aim is now to generate an intermediate tree like representation using the tree rewriting procedure. So that procedure I should know, what templates it supports I should basically know. So my aim is just to convert this representation of intermediate code which is available either as a DAG or as a um, uh, or as a basic block or a flow graph whatever it is and then convert that into a template tree like representation. So once that is done then it is up to the lookup table to gen look at this corresponding uh, input representation and convert it to corresponding target code which is available as a template. So here the tree should correspond to one of the predefined template tree, okay. You cannot arbitrarily generate, generate any uh, tree, it should obey the uh, already available templates because based on that template only you have a final code available, okay. So therefore that is the approach which is used here. After matching with the template there is a predefined code for every tree and it is generated. Now this is what we are looking at as uh, the um, flow of uh, representation. So your input will be a three address code and uh, this is uh, to intermediate code is converted to a template tree, okay. That is the algorithm here. So your job will be to look up this predefined template available and then simply convert this to one of the template tree available. Then that is given to the code generator. The code generation will look at this, uh, um, will get a template, map this template with the database and then generate the final code by just looking it up here, okay. So this is what is the uh, flow. Now uh, input tree is reduced into a single node by applying a sequence of tree writing rules if I have a larger tree in place, okay. So that is done in a bottom up fashion where you will reduce the input tree into a smaller subtree, okay. So the tree rewriting rules uh, is called as a translation scheme and that basically has the following uh, template, it is it has got a replacement. This replacement is done for a given template and what action should I basically do. So this action area here will correspond to the actual assembly level code template will be the tree, okay, and this tree is reduced to a single node, okay. So what is this tree trying to re be reduced, that is your replacement here. So replacement can basically take a template 
and if that is my situation, the template has to be converted to a replacement, what action should I basically take for a code that correspond to this particular template. Now, this template correspond to your predefined template tree and the replacement corresponds to a single node. That single node will typically be either a register or could be a memory and the action will be the code fragment corresponding to a assembly level code depending upon the target mission. Okay. Now, let us take this example. So, I have 8 rules which is available in the uh, textbook Aho Sethi Ulman and uh, there are other books also available. Uh, we will uh, put it in the e-text basically uh, where uh, uh, this is expanded further for working on. So, here this is my uh, single node register i and that is going to be replaced that gets the value from const, constant c. Okay. I can use this as constant c. The uh, other version of the textbook calls simply as c uh, capital C small c. So, capital C indicates is a constant. So, what am I saying here? I have to get the constant value into a register i that is the rule. Okay. So, the corresponding target code will be move hash c comma r i. So, hash c is going to be an immediate value available move this into r i. Okay, the next one is uh, register i will get a value from mem a, memory a. So, what does it basically say? a is a variable that is typically available in a register that is basically put into register i. So, the instruction corresponding to that will be move a comma r i. Okay, now, this is another one which is interesting. Now, my target is a memory okay. and if the target is a memory, I have to do an assignment of this tree. Okay. This is basically my assign, tree assignment where I have used uh, um, colon equal, this is my template tree, colon equal to is my interior node, left child is memory A, right child, right child is register I. So, what does it basically say? From register, you assign it to memory. So, the target is also going to be memory. Okay. So, from register, assign it to memory. So, you do a move R i comma A. Okay. So, you do a move R i comma A where R i corresponds to register R i and that is going to be A. So, the target as you could see, it is nothing but the memory location corresponding to A. Now, this is different. When I have an I and D here, it says indexed based addressing. Okay. So, the final uh, target will be a memory. Okay. And uh, I mean the uh, value will be a memory. So, what will it basically have? Register J is assigned to index of register I. So, register RJ comma index of register I. So, RI. So, normally when it is index based, uh, index based addressing, RI will typically contain an address. If you go dereference the address, you will get the contents. So, that is what is indicated here. So, this is one more template which is going to be using the index based addressing. The next uh, rule is register i, I have to uh, compute addition of these two okay, and then that is used as an index. Okay. Target is a register. Now, uh, const c and register i, so this is going to be contents of register i, where contents will be with an offset of c. Okay contents will be an offset of c. So, I have a c comma c of r j that is an index based computation. So, c of r j and that is moved to register r i. So, it is done to r i. Okay. The next one is a simple addition register i register j result is in register i. So, I, ha I have to do an addition here. So, add register j comma register i result will be in typically r i. So, this is the next rule. And correspondingly, the last and I mean the last two rules, register i is here. Now, we know what this basically tells you. This is nothing but an indexed comp computation with an offset. So, that is computed here as c of r j. Okay. I can also use this, uh, uh, I mean I can also compute this particular node based on the already available rule which is rule 5. So, this will be done which is going to be in uh, available in register i. So, which is nothing but move c of r j, right. So, this is nothing but c of r j that is the computation moving it to register i is what we have done here. Rather than that here what happens is this is nothing but c of r i in this example. Okay. Uh, this is register j of course. So, c of r j 
added with register i, result is in register i. So, C of R j R i. Okay. And then the final one is register i is given as register i plus const c. Now, const c, if it is going to be uh, any c, I can use the and um, r i comma a hash c, that could be my scenario. But if this const value is going to be 1, okay, I can use an increment function increment r i. If this constant c is going to be just 1, I can use the increment r i function, which is going to be simply incrementing the register content by 1 and the result will also be in R i only. So, if C is equal to 1, this is nothing but an increment R i. Okay. So, using these 8 rules basically, uh, supposing say you want a, a representation something like this, A of i is equal to B plus 1. So, what I should do first, I have to add B and 1, B with 1, that is increment B and then assign that value to A of i, that is my situation. So, the corresponding template looks something like this. Now, this is nothing but b plus 1, which is the last template which, which we have just now seen. And uh, a of i, okay, uh, this is my assignment operator. So, this will be, I have to reduce this tree, I have to reduce then this tree. This tree can be reduced very easily because it is simply saying increment by um, increment by 1, increment b where b could be moved to register first, okay? that is a possibility here. And then how do I do this? This is one indexed, uh, this is one addition or rather offset and then indexing of that offset. This is again uh, offset and an indexing of the offset, both register will be added here, that is indexed and then that is going to be assigned, okay? that is what we are like, trying to look at. So, let us see this uh, tree, um, first one is you apply rule 1 and move a to R naught. So, you are having A here, move A to R naught, that is your situation. Um, the next one will be applying rule 6 and then add stack pointer comma R naught. As you can see that, this is my add here. So, I have to add the stack pointer register with whatever the contents of C A is. C A is now moved to a register, therefore, I have to add register based computation and then apply rule 7 to index it using i, okay. i is available at the uh, root if you could, uh, this is i. Okay. So, I can uh, use that as an indexing situation and then I have to apply uh, rule 2 for the right side, right subtree where I will move b into r1, increment r1 and then the root will be an assignment operator, LHS r0 is an index. So, I do a star r0 and then move r1 into star r0, result will be in star r0. So, that is going to be my situation. So, you have to reduce the rule such a way that you can apply one rule after the other and then try to accommodate all the possible, uh, accommodate the input tree into any one of the possible trees. Of course, um, we can actually generate our own template trees depending upon what operations we want to basically permit. So, uh, all we now know, all we now need is you have the input tree address code you have to generate a database which will have a tree, a, a, a corresponding tree and what the tree indicates and if that is the tree input, how will the corresponding code be generated as an output, that should basically be defined. And then what we have to do is, how to convert the input tree address code to this intermediate tree is what we have to give as an example. Once this is done, we are done with our uh, template based approach to code generation. Now, uh, this uh, template is typically done with the syntax directed translation scheme itself. Okay. So, for example, if I have a register i producing const c, this is going to be my situation where we said uh, the constant c is moved to register i, the corresponding SDT for this scheme construction can be also uh, appended where I can say register i produces const c means move hash c comma r i and then I can also indicate it like this rather than asking, having it as a tree. So, this is basically easier for representation. Register i produces mem a means move a comma r i. So, uh, move the value of a into register r i. Then memory uh, produces uh, colon equal to memory a register i. This means register i is uh, moved into uh, the variable a. Okay. And then uh, this is index based addressing where I have two registers, register i and register j, where uh, it is a move on an index. Okay, indexing, indexing is on register i. 
So I have move RJ comma RI because result is in memory therefore it is going to be having an and, uh, indexed addressing on RI. And then this is nothing but register I is equal to index plus const C register J. So this is an offset of register J and then I have to uh, move it to register I. Okay, so I have done that and then um, this is register I is plus register I indexing plus const say register I. This is an add operator. So adding C of RJ okay, with RI result is an RI. Okay. So that is what this basically. So this as you can, can, can see this ind plus const C register J is similar to whatever is available here. Okay. So that is the, done with respect to and then that is to be added with register I's content. And the last one register I will be plus register I register J where I am adding the contents of register RJ and RI. Then uh, plus register I const 1 as I said if you could have a const C here this can be an add operation. If it is only const 1 I can use an increment operation itself directly. So this also does some amount of optimization where we have used increment operator compared to an add operator. An add operator will be costlier, it is going to take two inputs whereas this is going to be taking only uh, one parameter which is working on the operand on Ri. Now so far we have done five phases of the compiler where uh, we had a analysis phase and we had a synthesis phase. The analysis phase split the tokens, uh, split the input into parts and then we formed a, uh, we ensured that this uh, split input sequence is correct, it is valid, it is verified, etc. And then, then we went to what is called as an intermediate representation. From that representation, we looked at some uh, four approaches to code generation and then we got the final code in place now. Now, this generated final code need not be an optimized code, it need not use optimized set of instructions as I have just now pointed out that if um, um, there is no template available, whether I am going to add 1 to a register or I'm, whether I am going to add a 10 to a register, it will be simply an add command which will have an immediate operand. So add hash 10 comma ri. So I can uh, avoid that, if, okay, if I have a hash 1, if I have a hash 1, I need not look at as add. I can call that as a simple increment function. So how do I do that? That is what we are trying to look at here. The generated code by the code generator or intermediate code need not be efficient and uh, means have been done for getting efficient code using DAG and instruction selection. So we have uh, reordered the instructions, we have labeled the labeled the nodes with registers, all those, those have been done with the idea in mind that you need to, uh, to reduce the computation cost and to get an optimized code which is going to be generated. If you remember, we have talked in one of the modules that. Um, where you had some eight, ten instructions, if you could uh, um, prevent, if you could seek, uh, if you could change the sequence of instructions, we could reduce the number of instructions from ten to eight. Okay, that was one of the examples in module twenty-nine. So uh, we can look at that as an optimization procedure. Now the criteria for code improving transformation is um, they should have the most benefit for the least effort. So when I try to optimize, I should have the most benefit for the least effort and transformation should basically preserve the meaning of the program. So this is the first property of uh, the code optimizing transformation. So where the optimization should not change the output of the program. So whatever could be your input and whatever optimization you perform, you should not change the output of the program. So I think we talked about one uh, uh, structure preserving transformation where we incorporated algebraic property there, where I can say, I said that you can use the properties of mathematical identity uh, to uh, optimize your code. So mathematical identity means like uh, adding a 0 with uh, any variable is going to be the same variable. So we should not exploit this uh, uh, in the process, we should not, we should ensure that the sequencing of addition is basically preserved. So we have to be uh, correct in using the mathematical identity properly. So uh, when I say y, y cube for example if I have to compute y power 3, it is nothing but multiplying y uh, 3 times, so y into y into y. So I should not uh, skip one statement where I will simply compute as y squared. So I have to ensure that it is basically preserving the meaning of the program. The second thing is uh, transformation must on an average 
speed up the programs by a measurable amount. So optimization sometimes could slow down the program, prevention should be taken for this and uh, avoid any slowdown of your program. So just because we want to uh, fasten your uh, or increase the instruction uh, rather reduce the instruction cost, you should not have a large amount of code available there, thereby reducing the speed of your program, that should not be the case. The last one is transformation must be worth the effort, okay. The time that is spent on optimization code should be well utilized, okay. Uh, and so you should not spend so much of time in optimization itself, um, which is much higher than what you spent on coding, okay. So that should be the um, thumb rule for de determining how much of an optimization is basically required. Sometimes even without optimization, a code could run faster compared to finding an optimized code and then making it run, okay. So that should be the property. So you have to be uh, ultimately speaking on a crux. Uh, the last point is the crux of all the three points, transformation must be worth the effort and it should basically be semantically preserving what is being conveyed in the input, okay. So this is the uh, position of the code optimizers, opt optimizer. I have a front end, I have a code gen algorithm here and this is where is my intermediate code. I can apply optimization in one of the three positions, I either here or here or here. Okay. Now, when I do it here, it is at the user level. The user could basically change the uh, flow of the program, uh, that could change the algorithm to reduce the complexity of the program or uh, the user could adopt a different loop strategy or uh, the user could change the uh, um, if-else if to a switch, whatever it is. So it is again completely depend upon the user. So that is one area of optimization. So when you are designing, this is what we have already talk, talk, talked in the previous slide, where we said that the user should, should be spending more time on coding rather than spending more time, time on optimizing code. When the user is creating a program itself, uh, that code should basically be completely optimized, okay. So that is one area of code optimization. Second area is at the intermediate level, uh, where uh, uh, you have the basic block in place or you have the DAG in place. Can I try optimizing at the DAG level? This can be talked about, uh, this can be thought of as a machine independent compiler optimizer uh, where you are doing it at the uh, intermediate level. Uh, finally, I can also look at the target code where I can look at the target code to check whether it is going to be uh, any possibility is there for optimization at the assembly language level. So where uh, can I use lesser number of registers or can I change instructions? Uh, for example, the uh, increment instruction which we just now pointed out. So add hash 1 comma r naught could be replaced with an increment uh, r1 instruction. So that is possible at the target level. And then uh, you have one concept called as peephole optimization that is also typically done at the target code level only. So this is machine dependent, this is machine independent optimization. So you can have uh, the optimizer either at this level or this level or at the both or at both the levels. But again with the thumb rule that optimization should not be overdone in order to um, increase the speed you will end up actually reducing the speed of your program. So that should not be the case. So you have here two levels of optimization. First one is called as machine independent code optimization where we do three things. First one is called as the control flow analysis. Second one is called as the data flow analysis third one is called as transformation. So control flow analysis is how data flows, how uh, the control transfers from one block to the other basic block, okay. Uh, this here we will have what is called as global uh, optimization and data flow analysis is uh, looking at again look this, this will be considered as local optimization. Transformation is whatever could be possible within a particular basic block, okay. So here we have this uh, uh, structure preserving transformation and algebraic transformation is part of the optimization procedure here. Now this is looking at others and data, uh, control flow and data flow will also include the loop optimization that is possible, okay. Uh, loops are one areas where you have to, you can optimize much better and uh, control flow can also be thought of in terms of procedure call optimization, okay or recursive optimization, both are uh, possible here. Other one is uh, machine dependent code optimization where we have register allocation. Uh, where you can optimize on number of registers as well as utilization of special instructions like increment, decrement as against subtract or um, 
add. Now, uh, this machine independent optimization op operates at the intermediate le code level and th this one operates at the assembly level where uh, typically it is done using what is called as peep hole optimization. Now, this is what we have looking at. We are looking at first uh, the control flow analysis, data flow analysis as well as transformation that is going to be available part of the code optimizer here. So, we will first look at this particular block and then we will move on to peephole optimization later. So, this is what is the first thing which we are going to be discussing. So, the advantages of breaking like this is the operation that is available need to implement high level constructs. They are made explicit in the intermediate code actually. Okay. So, you have a star to implement uh, to represent multiplication. So, they are explicit. So, therefore, optimizing here is going to be advantageous. Second thing is uh, the address calculations like A of i etc are going to be directly seen. So, therefore, it is uh, more much uh, better to optimize here and the intermediate code is typically not dependent upon the target mission. Therefore, uh, optimizing here will be a generic optimization procedure rather than a particular optimization procedure. So, uh, typically the uh, um, intermediate optimization uh, can have uh, function preserving transformation where we will do common sub expression elimination, dead code elimination, copy propagation and constant folding. You will also do loop optimization here where we will talk about three optimizations, induction variable elimination, reduction in strength and code motion. Now, we will consider this example for uh, our situation uh, where we will uh, be looking at the quicksort program, convert this to a basic block and a control flow graph and then we will, uh, it is a recursive procedure and then apply all our optimization techniques here for um, consideration. So, this is the quicksort program. Uh, where uh, we know that you have a partition function here um, which is going to uh, split the array into two halves. So, these two are to rearrange depending upon the pivot, elements less than pivot will go to the left, greater than pivot will go to the right that is what is done here and then you will uh, call quicksort with the smaller area, the left area and the right area separately. So, you have a quicksort call here, you have a quicksort here call here. So, this is the program. So, this program has been now converted into a set of three address code. So, there is no uh, need to discuss this. Um, so, as you could see if n is less than or equal to m, i is equal to m minus n, j equal to n, v is equal to a of n. These are the three statements which is available here. There is a while and there is going to be two recursive calls. I am not looking at the recursive calls. There is a while and there are two whiles here. Okay. So, there will be one outside loop, there will be two inside loops here and there will be one uh, initialization which is going to be here. So, that is what is available here. These are the first th four steps of initialization. This is corresponding to um, one loop and this is the next loop L2 and L3. Those will be the uh, second and third loops. So, now I have uh, uh, six basic blocks totally. So, that is converted to a flow graph. We will be working on this flow graph okay, and then use that for our uh, optimization in the next session. So, the next module we will discuss this. Uh, to summarize this module, we have looked at template based code generation. We have also learned how to uh, construct a template tree based on tree rewriting rules and we have looked at an example for code optimization introducing the necessity for code optimization and where is it done, how is it done. Thank you.